College Football Week 13 previews brought to you by Tunica, Mississippi, the South's premier sports gambling destination. They got six incredible sports books. You can find all six of them over at tunicatravel.com. You can also find more information on us, our social media, our, our YouTube, our picks, our previews, our podcasts, everything else over at winningcureseverything.com. So go check out both of those. If you are just coming in, if you haven't seen the other videos, this is not Chris. I'm not Chris. Chris is in Disney World with his family for the Thanksgiving holiday, so my father so valiantly decided to step in and help out. Uh, there are not nearly that many people that I know that uh, that understand football the way that he does. He taught me what I know about football. Uh, I've taken it to a different level with uh, with all of my stats and my pages and, and everything else. But uh, as you can see, if, if you can see the, the notepad, he does the same thing. So maybe I did get that from him. Either way, the Winning Cures Everything Football Picks Contest over at winningcureseverything.com. Ten picks. Go put your picks in. Put your email in. It's free to enter. Very easy. Go do it. You're picking ten games against the spread. This week, you can win a $100 gift certificate to Twain Steakhouse at Sam's Town and a $50 slot play. Very good prizes. Very good stuff. Go check that bad boy out. Let's jump on in. The five biggest games, and then we got some honorable mentions. The biggest game of the weekend. Michigan minus four at Ohio State. You agree that's probably the biggest game? Oh, yeah. I mean, it's the the only top ten matchup. I mean, it's barely playing, barely a top ten matchup. <laughs> Thanks to Ohio no, State. But they're but, playing to represent that division yes. in the Big Ten championship game. Yes, and, and probably to win the Big Ten because the winner has to play Northwestern, who has been good, but... But they're still seven and four. And, but they also lost to Akron. So, um, <laughs> Michigan is number one in total defense. They're giving up two hundred thirty-four point eight two yards per game. Ohio State is number two in total offense, five hundred forty-one point eight two yards per game. So, stylistically, two completely different teams. The metrics have Michigan minus two point nine in this game. Michigan has played the number eight strength of schedule. Ohio State number sixty-five. Not good. Now, one thing, uh, it, it took me a little while to find a stat that would that would lead to Ohio State winning this football game. And the only thing that I could find was Michigan is number 128 in opponents' red zone scoring percentage. They are giving up 94.8% in the red zone. And they're number 117 in opponent red zone touchdown percentage, which is 73.4%. So... If Ohio State gets into the red zone, I would imagine they will be successful in scoring. But they may not ever but get they, into the red zone. But they may zone. not get there. You <laughs> would have they to. may score from outside the red yeah, zone. Yeah, they, they may do that. Uh, that is, This is a team that is explosive. They, their defense, for all the trash that we want to talk about Ohio State's defense, their offense has been lights out. They yes. have bailed them out of some bad situations. The only one that they didn't was obviously Purdue which is still weird to think about. That's just a strange thing, right? And so people have wanted to talk it's, trash. It's a, like Iowa last year. Yeah, it's it just a, a blip, which you can't have blips. No. Like, it, at least in this sport, right? If, in the NFL, I'd chalk it up to a bad weekend. Yes. But in this sport, you can't have bad weekends. You've only got so few, you know. Um, how do you feel about this game? I don't think Michigan has played anybody yet that can throw the football. That's Their defense is great, but they do a superb job of being gap sound against the run. Yeah. And they shut the run off, and nobody else has been able to throw the football against them. Now, Ohio it, State can throw the football. Penn State maybe would be your best – chance at that but maybe. they don't have the playmakers on the outside but it, that's exactly that what ohio i was going to say has. like I, I don't think that they are they're not nearly as talented offensively as ohio state no so this will be interesting to see two teams that are so incredibly different and in the past obviously we have seen defenses come out on top in games like this the biggest thing here will be i think michigan's ball control offense like, can they keep the Ohio State offense off of the field? 
if Ohio State's defense shows up and plays the run, I think they can get Michigan off the field. Yeah. I don't think Michigan can throw it well enough to to depend on the throw to make yards. And even then, I mean, we've seen Shea Patterson at – and this is, granted, a completely different situation, but a player is a player. Like, he is what he is no matter where he's playing. Yes. They have, they have set him up well to where he doesn't have to be the guy. Um, but if he does have to be the guy – it can get ugly quickly because We've seen that. he can throw it to the wrong team. Um, did you see Karan Higdon, the running back for Michigan, came out today and guaranteed a win? Like, and, and we are recording this on that. we're recording this on on Monday night uh, because it is a short week. It's Thanksgiving week. I'll be headed out of town, so we got to get these things done. But yeah, he he guaranteed a win today. He said, "Yeah, I'll stand by that." Like, why would I not? Just why would you? Like, why would you talk? Just shut up. Shut up. Like, <laughs> like you haven't beaten Ohio State. By the way, thirteen and one straight up against Michigan in the last fourteen years. The only year that they didn't beat Michigan was when they had interim coach Luke Fickle, and even then it was a close game. Well, that's what I had. Fifteen out of the last seventeen. Yeah, I mean it's it, thirteen out of fourteen, fifteen out of seventeen. It, it's the same thing. It's and the question is, does Ohio State have as many athletes as Michigan does? Oh, and the answer to that is and yes. the answer is yes. Uh, the other side of this, Ohio State's only been an underdog four times under Urban Meyer. One off four of them straight up. And that's what I've got going on this week. Yeah. that's. And we'll get to that in our gambling picks and whatnot. This is one of my picks. I'm sure it's it, – is it one of yours? Yeah. Okay. That's kind of what I was thinking. Uh, game number two, Oklahoma at West Virginia. This is a pick 'em. So it has gone back and forth from West Virginia being favored by one to Oklahoma being favored by one. Whenever we wrote all of our stuff down, it was a pick 'em. We're going to stick with that one. It's Friday, 7 p.m. ESPN in Morgantown, West Virginia. It, does it piss you off, by the way, that this game is on at 7 p.m. on Friday night and then Washington State, Washington is on at 7.30 p.m. on Friday night on a different channel? Like, I'm going to have to have two TVs set up again, and I'm going to be at my in-laws, and my wife is going to yell at me because I'm not doing family crap, and, you know, because I'm, I'm going to have the main TV set up probably with Oklahoma, West Virginia, and then I'll have Washington, Washington State on the iPad, and yeah, either well, way. I'll be at my house all by myself. <laughs> and you won't have to worry about nothing. I won't have to worry about anything. It's, I'll, I'll have to hear, like, we want to play a board game, and it's, well, it's going to have to wait till 1030. <laughs> Like well, well, with these two with passing offenses and whatnot, it'll probably be eleven thirty. But either way, uh, Oklahoma, West Virginia. Let's talk about that. The metrics have Oklahoma winning this by one. Um, look, since two thousand fifteen, Oklahoma is thirty three and three against the Big Twelve. They've got two losses to Texas, one to Iowa State. Both teams that are not traditional Big Twelve teams, not big offenses. They they can play a little bit of defense. Oh, Oklahoma's won and covered four straight against West Virginia. What about this team tells you that they will, one, be able to stop Oklahoma, and two, that Oklahoma won't be able to outscore them, even if they do get stopped? Like, tell me tell me your thoughts on this. Like, what, what am I reading wrong here? I had a... A very interesting stat pop up when I started looking at this game. Okay. Between these two teams, they have won, what, 18 games this year? Yes. Do you know how many of those are against teams that are above 500? Oklahoma beat Army in overtime, so that's one. They Uh, beat Iowa State. Both teams beat Oklahoma State, who is now above 500, so... Texas both beat uh, no 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 only one beat Texas. Well, and, and well we got like we got five total. Eighteen games you got like five or six. West Virginia didn't beat Oklahoma State, did they? Well, oh you're right. Okay, yeah you're right. <laughs> Oklahoma beat Oklahoma State, but then West Virginia didn't, and then West Virginia beat Texas, but Oklahoma didn't. So total of four. What I got out of eighteen wins. Holy mackerel. 
Oh, that whole right. conference is a dumpster fire. Yeah, that's it's a bad it's bad juju. They're all no good. I okay, I see where you're coming from now. Okay. Like TCU's five and six, Kansas State five and six, Texas Tech five and six, Kansas three and eight. UCLA three and eight, FAU five and six. Wow. I did not even realize that. It's horrible. And to have that much trouble with Army? Well, it, I'll tell you why they had trouble with Army because they well, the Army <laughs> kept the football away from them all day. <laughs> I think they had a their time of possession was fourteen minutes. <laughs> I think they I think they had three possessions. <laughs> but when you look, Oklahoma's what five hundred and seventy five or so a game, and yeah. West Virginia's above five hundred. Yeah, I mean it, it's going to be both teams will score almost at will. Whoever has the ball last. Yeah, and and I would imagine Oklahoma will find a way to have the ball last because they have in 33 of the last 36 against the Big 12. Like, at West Virginia has not been able to solve this Oklahoma conundrum. Uh, but this is in my gambling pick, so we'll, we'll roll on to that. Uh, game number three, Washington at Washington State. The Apple Cup, Washington State favored. Minus three and a half. Friday, 7.30 p.m. on Fox. This is in the Palouse. Whoo, boy. Metrics have got Washington State minus one. But Chris Peterson's five and zero against Washington State. Average score in those five games forty one to fourteen. It has not even been close. Washington, they are number eighteen in opponents' yard per game or yards per play. It's a four point seven one yards per play. They are number seven in opposing passing touchdowns. They're only giving up point eight two per game. Uh. That that spells maybe a little bit of trouble um, for me. You know, I'm I'm just the average total defense that Washington State has played, number sixty seven point six. They lost at number fifty six USC early in the year, and we have talked at length on this show about the fact that that probably shouldn't have been a loss. That that play was targeting absolutely. It should have kept the drive going, but either way, they lost the game. Uh, they beat number 14 Utah 28 to 24. They beat number uh sorry number 14 Utah 28 to 24. Beat number 18 Cal 19 to 13. And that is not like AP ranking, that is defensive ranking. Utah's number 14 in the country, Cal is number 18 in the country. Washington State had trouble with both of them, had trouble scoring, had trouble, you know, just with them period. Washington is the number 16 defense in the country. So they are one of those teams that will give you problems. Is there anything that Leach can do to win this game? I think he can, but I think Washington has the more physical football team. What is it about this? Like, is it just because they're a more physical team? Like, it's since Peterson has gotten there? Because Washington State has been able to beat everybody else across the board other than this team. I feel like maybe... When they get to this game, Washington State kind of puckers a little bit, just a touch. Might be. I mean, this is it, it's a rivalry game, and and people want to say that sometimes those things don't matter. In this case, it's a pretty big deal. Like this yeah. is about more than just you know an outside chance at a playoff. This is a team that they have not been able to beat, and they just can't handle them. It, it's maybe a mental thing. Washington has lost three ball games on the year. They lost to Auburn by what five? Yeah, twenty one sixteen. They lost to Oregon by three. Yeah, and, and that was to... that was fluky because they probably should have kicked the field goal to win it at the end. Like yeah. they missed a field goal, but either way. And then what was the the last game? Lost by two to Cal. Yeah, which is the same team that gave Washington State props. They, they have a way of being able to play in physical football games. And they pretty well do away with teams that are not physical. Yeah. Washington State's not physical. No. Now, I think they're a little more physical this year than they have been. They're better than they have been. But they still don't run the football. They still do not and run the football. their time of possession is not they got 81 great. yards a game rushing. And I think a lot of times they use their – their passing game as a running game, right? They they do the shovel passes. They do, like, the, the out routes because I don't think that they can run 
between the tackles. They can't run it between the tackles. And if you can't run between the tackles, it is going to be tough to stop this team because at Washington plays very sound gap defense. They they are very good at that. I I'm curious. Like there there is a reason why Washington State is favored by three and a half here. But well, it's because they're ten and one. It, well, exactly. It's I think perception is like yeah 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 they like this is for a playoff spot. I'll be I'll be interested to see it. I um, think Washington can stay balanced and can hang on to the football a while. They rush for better than 150 yards a game. Yeah. Um, now, Washington State's defense is decent. They they are 40th in the country uh, in yards per play defense. So, you know, not as good as Washington, but pretty good. But it, it may not be good enough. How many times does Washington State have to look at teams that can run the football? Early this year, I thought maybe Oregon, but that turned out to not be the case. Um, And Utah, early this year, Washington State caught them before they got hot. Yeah. Like back when they were having trouble scoring on anybody. So... You know, and at the same time, Washington State gave up 24 to Utah when they were kind of crappy at home. And the week before that, Washington beat them on the road 21-7. to So it's kind of, you know, and, and you hate to use it comparing of the same team. But, you know, but it is what it is. I, I will be curious to watch this game. Uh, Chris is a Mike Leach diehard. He will follow <laughs> Coach Leach into the abyss. Um. And and trust me, I've made some money on Washington State this year, but I don't know that I'd be making money if I bet on them this week. So, <laughs> game number four, and this may not seem like a huge national game, but the stakes are pretty damn high. Houston at Memphis. Memphis a seven and a half point favorite, and the only reason they are a seven and a half point favorite. Is because Houston quarterback Derek King is out for the year after uh, a leg injury last week. This game is Friday, 11 a.m. on ABC. A lot of good games on Friday this year. Yeah. A lot of good games, uh, which is fine with me since I probably won't be around for much on Saturday. <laughs> uh, 11 a.m., ABC. It's in Memphis, Tennessee. Metrics have got Memphis minus three. Memphis has looked abysmal in the rain this year. They have turned the football over. They make dumb decisions. Their play calling has been suspect in the rain. There is a 60% chance of rain on Friday. Not good for the Tigers. This game is for the AAC Western Division title. So the winner of this game gets to travel the next week to sunny Orlando, Florida to play the UCF Knights. Is it the Golden Knights? No, no, they, they cut the Golden out, right? Just the Knights. Just the Knights. Okay, so... Memphis would love nothing more than an opportunity to go and play their bitter rivals, which I don't know how that turned into a rivalry, but either way. Memphis, total offense, they are number seven in the country in total offense, 523 yards per game. Houston is number four at 541 yards per game. Don't know if this, like, this will not be the same offense, obviously, yeah. without Derek King. Total defense, though. The defenses are, are going to be the same because I mean, nobody's really out. Memphis is number 67 in the country in total defense. 398 yards per game against them. Houston, number 118, giving up 477 yards per game. I would not imagine that Ed Oliver is going to play this week after the shenanigans from the Tulane game last week. I could be wrong. I also don't think it matters. I like Memphis here. I don't like them to cover the 7.5. But I do think at the Liberty Bowl, this is this is their spot. Now, if it rains all day, like it like it might do, obviously things can change. We are recording on Monday night. If it rains all day, then it's just a crapshoot. They just throw it up, whatever side it lands on, flip a coin, whatever. Um, but I do think that Houston, without their quarterback, they they were able to put up some points on Tulane. But they were Memphis, able to win that ball game. Yeah. Now they already had thirty something at the half. Yeah. Like that it was so they, they put up another seventeen in the second half. But I think 
high pressure situation. Might be a little different situation. I do like Kendall Bryles, though. I would imagine if if Hugh Freeze is not your next offensive coordinator at Auburn, I think they might go get Kendall Bryles from down there. All I know is that when you look at their stats and you see that they're they're throwing the football for three hundred yards a game, and they're running for two thirty five. Yeah. How much of that is? Well, Derek King runs for a hundred something a game. Yeah, but how much of that is him, and how much of it is just? How much can you replicate with this new guy? And and from what I saw against yeah. Tulane, no. not a lot. Yeah. So the entire offense has to change on a short week on a like on a road trip. So how much can you change in over a holiday? Yeah. I mean, how much can you change in three days? Yeah. And and still have the guy be able to play, like be able to run an offense. I don't know. It it it's a dire situation for Houston. Uh, I can understand why they would put the line at seven and a half. I'd still probably take Houston plus the seven and a half. Mainly because of the weather, maybe? Maybe. And I've also got a lot of faith in Kendall Browse. Like I said, I, I think he's going to be able to find something because it's not like Memphis is world beaters on defense. No, but when they've needed stops, they've gotten them. They, they've been able to. Since, yeah. since Memphis got pretty well handled by Missouri. Uh, yeah. They've been better. They've been better. I mean, they, they gave up only 18 at SMU the other night, and I mean, SMU had put up 62 the week before. 25 yards rushing. I mean, that's just crazy. I, I don't know what to make of this Memphis team, but I'll, I'll tell you this. I will be betting on them if they go down to UCF because they hate that team. <laughs> like, that is a, a hatred that not a whole lot of people have, and I don't and know you, how they got should, it. You should get some line help with that too. Oh, <laughs> I would imagine I will. I would imagine I will. I I would I would think that that line will probably be about 16 17. Um I could be wrong, but we'll see. Game number 5 before we get into the honorable mentions. Utah State at Boise State. Boise a 3 point favorite Saturday 9:15 p.m. ESPN in Boise, Idaho. It's on the blue turf. The metrics have got Boise State minus three, so the line is right on the dot. The weather will be in the mid-30s, below freezing wind chill, but no precipitation, so Utah State should be fine. They are used to the cold. Last week against Colorado State, they were not used to the snow, (laughs) obviously. They've been averaging 51 points a game. They were only able to put up 29, and the last one of those touchdowns was with uh, like 40 seconds left, and that was to win the game. I'm not sure what to think about this game. Utah State has – they have been able to put up points on basically everybody. Their offense is, is great. Their defense is, eh, okay. But their strength of schedule is like number 124. I mean, they have played some crap football teams. So how much is it the crap teams or how much is it Utah State? We talked about it when we discussed Washington and Washington State. Physical football teams give Utah State problems. Yeah. They lost to Michigan State. Now, it was a close early game. in the year. Yeah, it was close, close game, but, but yeah. Physical game. They gave up, what, 200-something rushing yards in that game? I mean, crazy. Colorado State is more physical than most of the other teams on their schedule. Huh. And Colorado State gave them fits. Yeah, and they, they certainly did that. Part of the reason is because Colorado State can run it a little bit. They don't just completely rely on throwing it. Boise prides themselves on being balanced. Yeah. Yeah, they are. Boise is a physical football team. I I will admit that. Um, Yeah, the blue turf, like, it is tough to win there. Uh, (laughs) The the only games that, that Boise has lost this year. And this is going to sound goofy. They got beat by Oklahoma State. Yep. And just flat could not run the football on Oklahoma State. Yeah, that was – so Oklahoma State's new uh, defensive coordinator uh, came from Duke. And he is big on uh, being able to get pressure. Like, so he will uh, – he will uh, – he'll bring pressure from, from different areas. 
and he was able to figure out what Boise State was going to do running the football. So Duke has always had a pretty good defensive football team for the last three years plus whatever. And this guy was, was able to come in early with Oklahoma State and do that. And then eventually when you don't have the talent to be able to do it against the Big 12 offenses, yeah, then it becomes a problem because if you're bringing pressure from other areas, like those quarterbacks will find they, what hole is open beat you. and they will beat you. So, yeah, the, that's... The other game that they lost to San Diego State, they only ran the ball for 50 yards. San Diego State's a really physical team. Rocky Long, like if he wasn't 66 years old, like I think he would have gotten a, a bigger job by now. Yeah. Um, but I think he's comfortable. Like, why would you want to leave San Diego? I mean, you're making over a million dollars a year. You're just hanging out in San Diego. Why not? Too like easy. He, too easy. Like, he's 66. Like, he can hang out with his grandkids. Nothing matters. It's beautiful weather all the time. And then only a couple of times a year do you have to go to Boise or uh, or Wyoming or uh, where do they go? The, well, no, they went to Fresno on Saturday night, so... Like, Fresno's fine. I went to Fresno last year. It was great. Love Fresno. Um, so, yeah, I would imagine I'm leading Boise State here. Yeah. And I think the majority of the country will as well. Utah State is 9-2 uh, and two against the spread this year. Don't think it matters here. This is a, a different beast that they're going up against. Uh, let's move into the honorable mentions. We're just going to run through these really fast. Auburn at Alabama. Bama is minus 25 and a half right now, Saturday, 2.30 p.m. on CBS. Biggest notes here, Bama injuries. Like, what kind of difference is that going to make? And can Auburn score? And I don't think that the Bama injuries are going to matter a whole lot in this one, and I don't think Auburn can score. I haven't even looked at this one. That's, I, don't, I don't blame you. There's really no reason to. <laughs> All I know is if two is healthy, yeah. Auburn can't keep up. Exactly. And and who knows about the line? 25 seems like a ton in a game like this. But when Alabama wants to beat Auburn, I mean, we have seen, what, 49-7 to seven over the past few years. We saw 36 to nothing one year. So when Auburn's bad and Alabama's good, sometimes it can get a little lopsided. Mississippi State minus 11.5 at Ole Miss. This is the Thanksgiving night game, 7.30 p.m. on ESPN. Revenge for Mississippi State? You oh, think, I think so. I think uh, Nick Fitzgerald is a little irritated about how things ended for him last year and the way that Ole Miss uh, lifted their leg on, uh, <laughs> on Mississippi State last year. Uh, and State even almost came back and won the game late last year. But... This Ole Miss team is a train wreck, and defensively they have not looked good. Well, they can't stop all. the run. They they well they can't stop anything really, but I think State will have three hundred plus yards rushing on them. I think you're right. I think State is going to obliterate this team uh, because they are. I mean this this rivalry game for those of you that are watching that are not from down here. And we're based in Memphis, so we ain't that far away from, from the Egg Bowl. Man, they do not like each other. It is, whew, that is some hatred. That's pure, unadulterated hate right there. UCF at USF, Friday, 3.15 p.m. on ESPN. I would imagine it will be high scoring. I would imagine that USF cannot score enough to keep up with US, or UCF. No, they there's, cannot. There's too many Fs and Ss and Cs and... All this mess. Like, I just I can't keep up with it. Charlie Strong, uh, Chris loves him. Chris thinks he's just one of the best coaches that there's ever been. Y'all know how I feel about Charlie Strong. Uh, Blake Barnett, good quarterback. He ain't Mackenzie Melton. Uh, I think UCF kind of runs away with this one. They, this is another prime opportunity on ESPN. It is their window. It is their spot before Washington State, Washington, before Oklahoma, West Virginia. There will be a lot of eyeballs on this game. They had over 5 million viewers last year. It was one of the, uh, the top 15 most watched games last year. It'll probably be about the same this year. Uh, a lot of people want to see what UCF's got, and I think they will give it to them. Notre Dame minus 10.5 at USC. That's Saturday at 7 p.m., the ABC primetime game. The only way I think that Clay Helton can save his job is to get a win over Notre Dame, and even then I don't know if it's enough. And I don't think they're going to do it because Notre Dame minus 10.5 ain't near enough points here. 
uh, Notre Dame will demolish this team. USC has already lost three games by more than eight points. Yeah. And they're about to play the best team on their schedule. Yeah, no win November. Like I, th- I think that's what they were going for, right? That's what it looks like. <laughs> LSU minus one at Texas A and M Saturday six thirty p.m. on the SEC Network. Uh, I'm I'm staying away from this one. Like my gut tells me LSU wins because they've beaten Texas A and M every year since they've moved to the SEC. This is kind of like what we discussed with Washington, Washington State. It's just a mental thing. Yeah, uh, LSU just owns Texas A and M. Now I wonder if Jimbo can change that, but I think it takes more than like one season. Yes. To change that. Uh, he will eventually change it. Yeah. But I'm not sure he's got it changed yet. And I do think that Jimbo is the better coach between him and Orgeron. Orgeron has, has coached well this year. Yes. But overall, I still think Jimbo's better. I just don't know that, that this team is set up to be able to beat LSU, which sounds crazy to me because I had LSU pick 6-6 six and six to start the year. But... You know, LSU is playing for uh, for some pretty high stakes. Like, they, they need this win to get into a New Year's Six game, I think. Yeah. Um, and even if they lose it, they might still get into a New Year's Six game. But, you know, you, you like to go out. You like to get your 10th win. You like to get the 10th win. Tennessee at Vanderbilt, Saturday, 3 p.m. on the SEC Network. This one's for a bowl game. Intriguing? Ugly. Nah, not really. Like, it, definitely ugly. Um. Justin Guarantano, is that his name? Justin Jarrett, Justin Guarantano. <laughs> you got me. Who? Uh, what? Uh, the Tennessee quarterback that is out. If if Keller Christ has to play in this game, I think Vandy beats them. If Guarantano is back, I think Tennessee wins the game, and then Tennessee will go to a bowl game in their first year under Pruitt. I think a lot of this rests on whether or not they got the quarterback. Am I wrong? I think you're probably right. But Chris can play a little bit. He can also throw the ball to the other team a little bit, which is why Stanford said, <laughs> no, nah, cool, you, yeah, <laughs> go ahead. We, just get out of here. We good. Uh, South Carolina at Clemson. Clemson minus 24 and a half. I would imagine this line is going to get closer to like 27, 28 before it's all said and done. Saturday at 6 p.m., this is the ESPN night game, uh, the Palmetto Bowl. South Carolina is okay against other okay teams. I think this they com- is... They compete well. Sometimes. I don't think they're set up to be able to beat Clemson. No. I don't think they're even close. No. Troy at App State. I had to toss this one on there. App State minus 10.5. Saturday, 1.30 p.m. This one on your ESPN Plus app. So go sign up for your free trial on that bad boy. It's for the Sun Belt... Check out the name of this division name. You ready? The Group A division. So (laughs) the winner of this game will get to play, I have no idea who, Florida International? No, that's in the CUSA. Who cares? Either way, (laughs) it's uh, Arkansas State maybe or somebody, whatever. App State is is the best team in that conference. Like, bar none, hands down. Troy, they've got a backup quarterback, and they're having to go on the road to Boone, North Carolina. Like I, I like App State a lot here. Last four, let's roll through them. Syracuse at Boston College. Eric Dungey, I think, is out for the year, so I don't know what Tommy DeVito does for Syracuse. Uh, Boston College looked like uh, hot garbage against Florida State last week, so I also don't know what to make of them. But uh, Syracuse is 8-3, and three, Boston College 7-4. and four. This is kind of for bowl positioning here, so... Important game. Purdue minus four at Indiana. Another one for a bowl game. Jeff Brom, ever since word that he might be leaving to go to Louisville came out, they have lost two straight ball games. They are one and three since beating Ohio State. They need this one. And I think Indiana's a pretty good football team. I think Tom Allen, Tim Allen, no, Tom Allen. That's it. There you go. Um, Tim Allen's the... uh, Home improvement guy, guy. (laughs) Tim the Tool Man Taylor. Uh, Yeah, Tom Allen, good coach. Indiana, pretty good football team. Purdue should win the game, even on the road. We'll see where their heads are, because I would imagine their coach will be uh, in the Commonwealth on Monday. UAB minus two at MTSU. I believe that we are going to see this game again next week, because 
I think Florida International might get beat this weekend, and if they do, if MTSU beats UAB, then they will be playing in the Conference USA Championship game. Uh, but even still, if UAB wins the game, UAB will be 8-0 and in the conference, and they will be playing probably Florida International next week for the TUSA Championship, which is a crazy story. Crazy. Bill Clark, uh, somebody hire that man. Good gracious. Pitt at Miami. Miami is a five and a half point favorite. Pitt is already your ACC Coastal Division winner. Miami got bowl eligible last week in Blacksburg, so they are six and four. Good old Mark Richt and his wonderful Hurricanes. We have given you the information that you need to go be a winner. So go put some action down in Tunica. Pick out a game that you like. Go tell your attendant which one you want. TunicaTravel.com will tell you everything you need to know about the sports books down there. You can find more information on us over at winningcureseverything.com. Go check out the gambling picks video.